What is called, you know, a slide move? I mean, everybody doesn't know exactly what it is. I know what it is, but the people maybe watching don't know what a slide move is. And what's the variation from the normal way that you come set and hold a runner on? Well, typically, you know, we saw back in the day, you know, back in the 30s and 40s when you were playing. Um, well, it maybe wasn't that long, but <laughs> anyway, you know, you used to have, even Palmer used to have the big high leg kick and all that. And and I remember Ferguson Jenkins talking about how, look, I already lost a guy. He's on first. I don't want to spend too much time on him because I'll lose another guy. And now I'll have a guy's at first and second. And that's fine for those guys. They were Hall of Famers, and they could get guys out with regularity. But everybody doesn't get guys out with the same regularity. So, therefore, the finer parts of the game are even more important. Um, so the slide step is just something where they're going to, you know, deviate how high you pick your knee up and go out. But on the pickoff move, you got to have good footwork as well. You have to have your feet underneath of you. You have to see the runners. So when you come up to your set position, the important part here is the footwork. When I go to throw to first base, the first thing I move is my back foot. My back foot's going to come in front, and then I'm going to step towards first base. Now, it's going to happen very quickly. That's kind of in slow motion here. So as I go quickly, it's going to be there. And you'll notice the noise. It's more of a boom, boom, because if technically, if you do a, what they call a jump step, where you move both feet at the same time, that's technically a balk. A balk. Yeah. So you're not allowed to do that. So you move your feet as quickly as possible, almost simultaneously, and be able to set yourself over there to throw the ball to first base. Now, one thing that I always try to make sure kids understand, especially coming up, is that you, most kids are taught that you actually have to step back to throw to first base. Now I'm set, I see the guy, he's inching off, he's inching off. You know what, I'm gonna let him bury himself. Keep going. I'll even look away every now and then. I'll go back to him and see how far off he is. And then what happens, a lot of people were taught to step back and throw to first base. There's two reasons why you don't want to do it. One, it takes longer. It takes more time. Okay. But even the most important thing is, is that if I'm in front of the pitching rubber and I come in front quickly and throw over and I throw it into the stands for whatever reason, it tips off the glove and goes out of play, they get second base. But if I step back and throw it over, he gets one plus one. He gets third base because now I'm a fielder. In front of the pitch and rubber, I'm a pitcher. In back of the pitch and rubber, I'm a You're fielder. A fielder. In your mind, what would be considered a good balk move? Well, what you can do is, since remember I talked about the shoulder, right. you can either have the knee or the shoulder work. So what you do is a balk move, and I did this many times when you would come up, what I try to do is I would pull this shoulder in like this. So at the same time, I'm moving my back foot, getting in a position to throw over there, I'm pulling my left shoulder in. So if the, guy, if the runner's yeah. catching my shoulder. The runner shoulder, has to key off your shoulder. He's either keying my shoulder it moves or my in, back he's foot. Breaking. That's right. They're either keying my shoulder or my back foot. And, and runner, certain runners are more comfortable you know, with, with different things. So if I can get him to where I can tuck that shoulder in at the last second. Kind and, of an uncoordinated move. Exactly. It is. You gotta, that's why you got to practice it. And I know I'm going to first on this. I know I'm going to do a balk move before I even come to my yeah. set. So I'm prepared for it mentally and physically. So I tuck that shoulder in. If I can just get him to move the wrong way, I got him. Yeah. The other way is a balk move can be some guys, what they do is, again, when you come here in the back step, they'll, they'll kind of bend their back leg. Bend their, their knee. They're just going to bend As their knee. As if you're going to break and exactly go Exactly right. So what they do is they, they'll, they'll, they'll bend their back leg and then they'll go any type of movement that they see without you picking up your heel that they think you're going. And if they're stealing, then they'll go, or even just take a real hard secondary lead and you'll still get the guy. So there's two things that you can do with balk moves. And most of the time you're gonna get away with it. Unless you do it all the time, then teams are gonna get videotaping and then the manager's gonna come out before the game. He's gonna say, hey, this guy's got a balk move. Watch him, he's gonna bend his shoulder. He's gonna do it. Yeah. So you can't do it all the time. But you can do it in a key situation where you're like, hey, it's time to break out the big boy now. All right. Well, Davey, thank you very much for joining me on the dugout today. That was pretty interesting considering we don't get to see it very That's often right. anymore.